in terms of a quintessential part of our modern day human civilization. The ancient Mesopotamians may have been some of the first humans to build dams. The ancient known dam is known as the Jawa Dam, located in present day Jordan, which was built in the 4th century BCE. The main purpose of this dam was to provide farmers with a steady source of water to irrigate their crops. Fast forward to today, dams provide a range of economic, environmental, and social benefits. That includes recreational, flood control, water supply, hydroelectric power, waste management, navigation, and wildlife habitats. Modern dams are usually multi-purpose infrastructure projects to guarantee a good return on the investment. However, dams are complex and sophisticated construction projects. Selecting the appropriate site location, choosing the right type of dam, and ensuring the overall structural stability. Since all dams have a foundation sitting on rock or soil, or the combination of the two, geotechnical engineers have a pivotal role in the construction of these amazing structures. The foundation and the structural stability of the dams should be guaranteed. This video is part of a three-part series on how geotechnical engineers are involved in dam construction. This is part one of the series, and we will zone in on embankment dams. This is Geotechs with Clemens, and let's go ahead and discuss how geotechs are involved in dam construction. Dams come in different types and sizes. The purpose, coupled with other multivariate factors like geographical location and topography, detects the type of the dam to be constructed. Embankments, gravity, arc, and buttresses are the four most commonly built dams, and they have their own advantages and disadvantages. Dams that are constructed of earth and rock, or the combination of two, are generally referred to as embankment dams or field type dams. The construction of embankment dams is a recent worldwide trend in place of the concrete dams. Two major distinct advantages and features of embankment dams over concrete dams can be summarized as follows. Rigorous conditions are not required for the dam foundation. While a hard and a sound foundation is necessary for concrete dams, embankment dams can be constructed even on alluvial deposits and pervious foundations. Construction of embankment dams has an economical advantage. That is, the dam project can be planned in the outskirts of the city area because of the merit mentioned above, and the construction materials are principally to be supplied near the dam site. Embankment dams are classified in two main categories by the types of soil mainly used as construction materials, such as earth fuel dams and rock fuel dams. To avoid disasters like this, The main body of the rock field dams should have a structural resistance against failure, consisting of a rock field shell, transition zones, impervious core, and facing zones that have a role to minimize leakage through the embankment. The embankment dam project is composed of three main phases. During the investigation phase, geotechnical engineers investigate the site conditions that includes meteorological and hydrological surveys, topographic and geological investigations. The geotechnical engineers also carry out foundation surveys and check for the quality and the quantity of the construction materials. The geotechnical engineers have to check for the shear strength, permeability, bearing capacity, and the compressibility of the site materials. The preceding phase is called the design phase. Geotechnical engineers check for the stability of the foundation and the dam body, seepage through the embankment and the foundation, and devise solutions for the foundation treatment. By utilizing numerical analysis computer programs, 
geotex designed for the stability against sliding failure of the embankment. That is, rigorous evaluation of the pore water pressure during and after construction, the shear strength and the deformation characteristics of the fuel materials. Moreover, if the dam is to be built in an earthquake prone area, the engineers conduct seismic stability analysis. Geotechnical engineers check for the potential liquefaction of the embankment and foundation, dynamic deformation characteristics, dynamic response analysis, and provide earthquake resistant design solutions. Stability of the material transition zones, also known as the planes of weaknesses of the dam body and the base foundations, are analyzed. As you shall see in the following chapter, seepage analysis is very important to prevent structural and foundation failure. Geotechnical engineers analyze the discharge, pore water pressure, leakage through the foundation, critical velocity, piping, critical hydraulic gradient, and the hydraulic fracture. The third and the final phase is the construction phase. Geotechs are involved in foundation treatment, placement of embankment materials, observation of pore water pressure, the settlement, earth pressure, and the deformation of the foundation and the embankment. Most of the catastrophic failures of embankment dams are caused by overtopping of the reservoir water due to flooding or loss of free body. Other main factors that cause embankment failures are hydraulic erosion, high pore water pressure, earthquake forces, and so forth. Embankment failure can be classified in three ways. That is, hydraulic, seepage, and structural failures. The question now is, why and how do failures occur from a geotechnical perspective? An excessive and abrupt increase in pore water pressure, such as the one built up during construction and the residual one due to rapid drawdown of the reservoir, may cause sliding failures in the embankment. You see, during construction, there is a relatively high pore water pressure built up in the earth dam due to the increase in surcharge load. If this pore water pressure is not properly monitored and given enough time to dissipate, this may lead to a catastrophic sliding failure during construction. In another case, if a rapid water drawdown occurs, the distribution of the pore water pressure at the usual stationary flow is changed. This causes high excess pore water pressure due to the low permeability of the fuel in the upstream part of the embankment, leading to potential sliding failure. When water flows passing through the soil in an embankment and foundation, seepage forces act on the soil particles due to the water viscosity. If seepage forces acting in the soil are large enough as compared to its resisting forces based on the effective earth pressure, erosion by quicksand takes place by washing soil particles away from the surface, and piping successively develops as erosion gradually progresses. Another destructive action of seepage through the pervious foundation is by which the uplift pressure on the impervious foundation causes heaving near the toe of the embankment. Hydraulic fracturing, quicksand, and piping can readily occur around the downstream toe when the hydraulic gradient increases with the concentration of flow lines and the reduction of the effective stress is inevitable in the ground due to the action of the upward seepage forces. In the dam design, Adequate drainage facilities such as the filter zones and drains are provided in the interior of the embankment, and piping failure as stated above would not be expected to occur in ordinary conditions. One of the unusual situations to be considered is the generation of interior cracks in the impervious zone and the foundation, which is mainly caused by differential settlements during and after construction. Embankment failure due to the earthquake excitation can be classified in two groups. One is damage caused by liquefaction or softening of the sand foundation, and the other is sliding and cracking of the embankment body resting on a hard foundation. In the former case, 
High excess pore water pressure is generated during earthquakes by the application of cyclic shear stresses in large deformations, as well as the vertical displacement that develop in the foundation. Thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. And if you want to support me and the channel, please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section.